Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to, well, as you can see from the title, um, kind of my at My Little Pony Friendship is Magic series uh, overview video. Now I'm calling it that simply because there's not too much else to really refer to it as. Um, basically, I'm going to be giving some of my overall thoughts on the series as a whole, as well as specifically Season 9. Um, and we're going to start with some Season 9 stuff because I feel like it's just the best place to, like, you know, get this really going with. So, let me bring up something here. Here we go. I gotta just adjust that. <laughs> so, we're starting off with my episode rankings, my scores for the episodes of Season 9. I think it's a good place to start, um, and I'll try to get this as large as we can. I'll, I'll explain each of them briefly, but I'm not going to go into like too much detail because don't want to spend too long. This is already going to be a long video, so strap in. Um, so, as you can see, um, the episodes range in score. Um, I've scored each episode separately, including two parters. Each got their own separate scores. And we just went from there. Uh, so... Let's talk about some of my 5.0s, and these are all out of 5, so 5.0 is the highest ranking. So let's go with the 5.0s first, and the first one we have is episode 4, Sparkle 7. This was the 200th episode, um, and it featured our team, our main six, basically working to help Shining Armor defend Canterlot Castle to create the defenses and everything needed. Um, and this episode was fantastic. It had great writing, had great characterizations, it had some just really fantastic humor. It did pretty much everything it needed to write. Plus, it's just exceptionally entertaining on multiple rewatches. Um, after that, we go to episode 8, Frenemies, which focused entirely on our villain team of the season and of the finale of this series. And this one I gave a 5.0 to not just because of how unique its concept was by uh, in terms of this series, by giving the villains a full episode to themselves and really giving them just a lot of great focus and attention with it, but it also had a great song in it. It had some great characterizations and developments for the characters and really set forward what was going into the finale. Uh, after that, though, we move on to episode 12, The Last Crusade. Um, this was the uh, the Scootaloo-based episode. Also, I realized that I have to bring this down a little bit. It is the Scootaloo-based episode that focuses on her parents finally being revealed. Um, the only really real issue I saw with this episode was the fact that the parents are being revealed this late into the series. But the episode itself is phenomenal. The writing, again, the uh, her parents themselves and just the, their reasoning for never having appeared before. Um, of course, I have to mention Scootaloo's lesbian aunts. I mean, I, I, I would be remiss to not bring them up. Um, and, and the resolution just felt really fantastic. On multiple rewatches, it just gets better and better, and I just feel like it's one of the best of the entire series. Um, the next 5.0 after that isn't until episode 20, though, which is a horse shoe in which is the episode in which Starlight is looking to appoint a vice head mayor or vice head stallion for uh, the school of friendship for when she takes over from Twilight. Um, and Trixie thinks she's just automatically getting the part, so she's barely trying at the interview process. The episode is hilarious. Trixie and Starlight are at the top of their game. And it's great to see some, uh, some fandom shout-outs with characters such as Dr. Hooves and Octavia being in it. Not to mention, it just has some great comedy and overall enjoyability as you rewatch. And that's the final uh, 5.0. As you can see, there weren't too many of those this season. Um, and I think the biggest reason for that is because the second half of the season, 14 through 26, 
in my opinion, dropped the ball a lot. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to get on to next is ep uh, episodes that I gave less than a 3.0 rating to, um, which I consider like, like not just bad episodes, but terrible episodes. If it gets less than a 3.0, it's like getting to that point where it's like, yeah, it's really bad. And the funny thing is, there weren't any of those. There wasn't even anything below a 4.0 in the first half of the season. That It didn't start until episode 15, where we got 2, 4, 6, great. Now, you may remember how much I talked about this with my uh, actual uh, reaction, but my thoughts really haven't changed any. Um, basically, the big issue with this episode is that Rainbow Dash is made to look in the wrong, even though she's in the right. Um, and this isn't the first time that's happened either, because the episode Parental Glidance, which introduced Rainbow's parents, did the same thing. It painted Rainbow as being in the wrong for, her, for getting angry at her parents, even though she was in the right, because her parents were disruptive, uh, a danger to others, and just being complete nuisances in general. In this one, though, Rainbow is in the right to get uh, just kind of apathetic and angry towards being forced into a role she has no business in um, because, again, she has no business in the role. She has no reason to be in that position. And it was just forced on her. And the episode itself tries to make it seem like, oh, she was in the wrong and she was actually perfect for this all along, which is absolute bullshit, and it uh, kind of forces her to suddenly be uh, fairly good at something that she really shouldn't be, at, per her character. Um, the other one, the next one after that, though, is episode 18, She Talks to Angel. This one was just bothersome on multiple levels. And I think one of the biggest things about it, I mean, even just outside of all my other issues with it, is just it's not fun. Like, they have this Freaky Friday type concept with it, and it just doesn't feel fun. It feels like it's a waste of time. Like, it just kind of does not work and does not entertain to any degree. And on top of it... It has these issues with Fluttershy and uh, Angel's characterizations and portrayals in this. Especially when it tries to paint Angel as being in the right for being a selfish, stuck-up, just completely unlikable piece of shit. It tries to paint him as being in the right and tries to paint Fluttershy as being in the wrong for doing her literal job, in this case, working uh, the animal sanctuary properly. So it's like, it's just, it really bothered me when I saw it. And it still bothers me to this day, to the point where I can barely watch it. Um, but after that, we have episode 21, Daring Doubt. This one only got a 1.0 and is my lowest voted episode of the season, and one of my lowest voted of the entire series. The reasoning for this is because it breaks continuity uh, by just completely changing Aoi Sotil's, uh entire goals and just ideas and whatnot and his motivations. Like, it legitimately contradicts what Aoi Zodal had said was his, again, his plans, his ideas, his motivations. It contradicts stuff that was said for that in previous episodes, previous Daring Do episodes. On top of that, the way it tries to redeem Caballeron is extremely problematic and really just bad. <laughs> um, the way it, ha it, ha it forces Fluttershy to be completely dumbed down for the sake of the plot. And... The fact that it does side with someone who, up to that point in the episode, was clearly, obviously the bad guy. The fact that it does side with them in the end and make them sympathetic is just, honestly, 
it's not good. Um, but the next episode after that is also kind of uh, weak, and that is growing up is hard to do. This one is 1.9, so almost a full uh, point higher, but it's still pretty, pretty bad. Uh, this is another one that's just really hard to watch and hard to rewatch. It's not entertaining at all. But on, on, on top of that, it relies entirely on the idea that the CMC are still little kids, which they're not. Throughout the series, throughout multiple episodes, it's made a point of saying that the CMC are grown up. Not like adults, but grown up. They're older. They're wiser. They know the difference between being being grown up and just, you know, all of that. And this episode treats them as if they're just still dumb little kids. Like, it doesn't work. If this kind of thing was done in, like, seasons one or two, maybe even three, then sure. I could believe it then. But this far into the game, it does not work. It, it, it can't work. And again, the entire episode hinges on them being still that young and childish. And since they're not, the episode makes them extremely out of character and causes everything else in the episode to fall apart. So, yeah, there's that problem as well. Um, now, I, I, the last thing I want to talk about regarding this is just the premiere and... Uh, finale. The premiere started off things excellently by introducing um, a new villain to the mix a, a, and a good villain who would be perfect for a series finale for this show at this point. Um, it got things excited, um, just kicked off things with the final season in an excellent way. That made sense. It all worked for like, oh yeah, this is what we need to have as a storyline for the final season. The finale, however, and I'm counting all three episodes, 24 through 26, um, ruined it big time. And, and I'm not saying the finale was altogether bad because it very much wasn't. The finale episodes were very, very good. They weren't perfect, obviously, as you can tell by my ratings, 4.5, 4.6, 4.6, 4.7. Um, by the way, that's not intentional. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, they had some issues, and the biggest one obviously being the fact that Grogar was Discord the entire time, because it completely invalidates pretty much everything, as well as makes Discord to be an irredeemable piece of shit, um, because there is nothing that he really could have done to redeem himself after pulling something like that, after putting all of Equestria in mortal danger for... Honestly, a really stupid reason that doesn't hold any water. And on top of that, on top of that, you also have to take into account that what he did do that they forgave him for, uh, basically freeing Starlight so she could free everyone else and they could get out of the, the caverns to get Twilight, that is by no means worthy of redemption at that point. In fact, it's like, it, it almost seemed like an accident. Like, he, he seemed like he was just a, randomly attacking. It just happened to, like, set Starlight free. It, it, it was, like, just kind of coincidence. And even if it was intentional, that's still not enough to be worthy of redemption after, again, what he did. What he did was that heinous, that just horrible. So that was easily the biggest issue that, again, connects to the first, uh, the, the premiere. And, and I've heard, I think it was Big Jim say on Twitter, something along the lines of, oh, well, we, we had to have these three be the final villains because of the connection they would have to the past of the series. We're not just going to bring in someone random and have them be the villain. And the problem with that is that argument holds no water. One, why not? Grogar is a big name that 
people in the fandom know because of his part in uh, Generation 1. Even people who haven't really seen it have heard of Grogar. Like, that's a, he's a big name. And on top of that, his uh, introduction in the premiere made him worthy of that kind of role. But even if you weren't to, if you didn't want to have Grogar as the final villain for the main six to fight, you still could have had it be Chrysalis, Cozy Glow, and Tyrick without having, without having Grogar have been Discord. It, it's really simple. You could have just had the three vi other villains defeat Grogar. Like, he comes back, they take him out. Basically, just like what they did, just without the Discord reveal. And it's like, it's just really confusing. Because the Discord reveal did nothing positive in the end. Um, and then, of course, there's the final, final episode, The Last Problem. Um, the episode isn't, like, amazing to, like, rewatch. It doesn't have a lot of great rewatch value. Um, especially because the part with uh, Twilight, the part that's centered in the past where Twilight is like, worried about leaving Ponyville and leaving her friends behind and all that. It's not that exciting. It, it's kind of like, oh, we've seen this before. Why are we watching this again? And it's like, here's the thing. It works for a first viewing on the finale, but when you're trying to watch the finale again and again, whether through other people's reactions or just on your own or whatever, it comes across as honestly boring. Because it's like, again, you've seen it all before and it doesn't feel exciting enough to hold itself at that point. Now the stuff with um, the uh, future main six and all, and of course uh, Twilight's new student, that stuff holds up very well. That stuff is great on multiple rewatches. But that's really the only stuff that is. Um, I will admit, though, that the very last shot of the of the series with the book closing was phenomenal like that is the perfect way to close out the series i've seen other reactions and stuff and almost everybody has pointed that out as well and it's just it's just a big deal it, it's a really big deal that they did that and i i really like that um but moving on from episode scores we also have my seasonal wish list. So for those of you who have watched for a while, you know that I do a seasonal wish list for MLP. And every season there's a different set of things that I want to see happen. And this was my season 9 wish list. Now obviously there's not going to be anything past this because the series is over. But here's the stuff that did and did not happen. So we're just going to start with the stuff that didn't happen or couldn't because of something else that did. Um, so the return of Bab C. This is something that I've really wanted basically since season three. We've seen her in the background, I think, two or three times, but that's it, and I don't count that. I'm talking like a real return. We never got it. We never got it. And it's really disappointing because it could have done wonders for the CMC storyline, especially post-Cutie Mark. So unfortunately, we didn't get that. We also didn't get the return of Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Again, they appeared a couple times in the background, but they had no real role after their redemption slash the CMC getting their cutie marks, which is extremely problematic for their characters and the series and the entire CMC storyline as a whole. Because it completely ruins Diamond, Tiara, and Silver Spoon's characters by basically forcing them to be nothing more than plot devices for the CMC. It, it makes them just... And it's basically saying that there was nothing that the writers could figure out to do with them afterwards. However, I've heard plenty of people in the fandom come up with some amazing ideas. So the idea that the writers couldn't think of any way to properly integrate them in at that point is bullshit. They didn't try. And it's real again, it's just really disappointing and it just comes across as just character like destruct basic just destroying of the characters for the sake of the cmc and and that's really a bad thing 
Um, we never learned, we never got closure about Pinky's magic seen in the season eight finale. See, in the season eight finale, uh, when all the magic was returning um, to everyone, we saw a bit of magic going to Pinky, hinting that she actually has some, some kind of magical power to her specifically. And I wanted to see that get closure. I wanted to see it like get explained. Like, okay, why does Pinky have magic? I didn't want it to just be some random little gag, uh, joking about, oh, Pinky has all these powers and all the, she could do all this stuff, and, and we're just going to throw in a little visual gag because of it. And it's like, I, I didn't want it to be that because that felt lazy. And yeah, it was. they ended up going that route. It, it ended up going the lazy route. And just... I really feel that also could have been very much explained. It r really could have. Um, we didn't get another celebrity voice actor. We got a couple returning ones, but we didn't get a new one, so that didn't happen. Um, next up, we have Scootaloo learning to fly or is flat out confirmed disabled. This was something that I felt needed to happen for Scootaloo's character, um, and it didn't. It was never confirmed one way or the other, and in my eyes, it really, really hurts Scootaloo's character overall. Because not it's it's been a massive point of her entire character since the very beginning, practically. So by not confirming anything one way or the other, it kind of just leaves a big plot hole unanswered. And... I know some of the writers might say things like, oh, we left it open for the for the fans to decide on. And it's like, that that's a really cheap cop-out answer. And I've seen some of the writers and all, some of the staff saying that for a bunch of things after the end of the se series. And it's just really cheap cop-out. It, it, it doesn't hold water. It's not a valid argument. So it, it's definitely one of the biggest flaws with this series. Um, we didn't get a heartswarming-focused episode, which I'm disappointed at, but that's not as big of a deal. Um, I wanted little to no Luna Discord and or Flurry Heart. One major and or two minor appearances. Um, we got quite a bit of Discord in this season. There was little, very little Luna and very little um, Flurry Heart, but we got a lot of Discord, and I, I kind of grouped it all together, so I had to cross it off because of that, just because of the Discord. Um, basically, just to put it simply, they're three of my least favorite characters in the entire series, especially Discord, and especially after the finale. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't like seeing them on screen. I just really don't. Um, and the last thing that we, um, we did not get is another fandom criticism episode. And I think that the reason we didn't is because of how much uh, hate the last one got, unfairly, mind you, but um, the last one got attacked so heavily by the fan, by a certain subset of fans who are, un who are afraid to hear any criticism towards themselves. Um, and so the, the staff didn't, uh, presumably didn't want to uh, go down that rabbit hole again. Which is really just silly that they gave in to their bitching and moaning. Um, but now let's talk about the stuff that did happen. So I wanted to see the return of Chrysalis, Tyrick, and, Close, and Cozy Glow. I put this all in one. Even I, I, Obviously, I made this before we got the premiere. Um, I was saying Tyrick and Cozy Glow because of how the last season ended. And Chrysalis because her arc with uh, Starlight hadn't finished. Um, and we got all three. I didn't expect all three to be in the premiere, and I definitely didn't expect Sombra. But we got all three returned. Um, I wanted to see references to Past Generations, Equestria Girls, and or the movie. And we got all three of those. Uh, we had Past Generations with, uh, with, uh, oh my god, I said his name just a little bit ago. Grogar. Um, we got Equestria Girls stuff with uh, Sunset Shimmer being shown in the final episode. And we got uh, multiple things in regards to the movie. Uh, one big example being uh, the return of uh, Tempest in the finale, even if she didn't have a speaking role, as well as uh, various other little notes here and there. 
So we got to see all of that. The next thing, we did get to see more of the extended Apple family. Um, not usually in massive appearances, but we did get to see more of them. And I just, that's, that's just what I wanted, just to see more of them. Uh, we did get a tear jerker episode on the level of the perfect pair. In fact, we got a few. Um, and that's not just counting the final episode. Because if we go back to here, um, there's a couple on here that I would consider like legitimate tear jerker episodes. One of which being the last crusade, which definitely brought me to tears. Um, but yeah, and then there's the Big Mac question, which was a huge tear jerker episode. Um, and of course, the last problem just being the final episode of the entire series. Um, but after that, we also got to see Scootaloo's family shown. This was something I really wanted and most of us really wanted at this point. Uh, we wanted some kind of explanation for that. I, I put notably her lesbian aunts because they had been in the comics and everything in the chapter books. And we got them. We got them and the parents and it was great. But like I said, one of the best episodes of the show. Um, I wanted Derpy to return in a notable speaking role, and she did. Derpy returned, she had a speaking role, and it was made very notable. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's really as simple as that. Um, I wanted confirmed LGBTQ plus representation, and we got multiple cases of that. Uh, we obviously got Scootaloo's aunts, but we also got Lyra and Bon Bon, proposing to each other and getting married. That was a big one. Uh, so yeah, we got some LGBTQ plus representation. And the final thing I wanted was the perfect ending. And when I first told you guys this wish list back when the season was starting, um, I did say that what I wanted with the perfect ending was the closing of the storybook. And that was exactly what we got. And it was the perfect ending. It was the perfect way to end it. But even on top of that, there was also the fact that um, we had the uh, time skip. The time skip was a fantastic idea and something I was honestly hoping for. I liked seeing their older selves. I liked seeing Pinky uh, being a mom, um, being married to Cheese. I liked seeing uh, Rainbow and, uh, and Applejack being together, which, by the way, another confirmed LGBTQ plus representation. Um, because, yeah, it's it's undeniable. <laughs> um, it's just, there is, there is a lot of great stuff that came out of that. Uh, and yes, um, Twilight Student uh, did feel like very much just a, tw a, a Twilight clone, like a season one Twilight clone. But in the end, it's like, eh, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Um, so yeah. That was what did and did not happen on my wish list. Obviously, uh, nothing else is going to happen from this point forward, as I've stated, because um, we're done with the show, which kind of sucks. But uh, So what did I think of the show overall? Well, I thought the show was, well, obviously fantastic. Um, it definitely had its low points, definitely had bad episodes, bad characters, uh, just bad moments in general. But overall, it was fantastic. And I love how it was kind of split into different arcs for Twilight. Um, because Twilight obviously was the main, main character. Um, the first arc, of course, being seasons one, one to three, is all about Twilight learning about friendship. The second arc, which starts in season four, and I would say goes on until... It, I think it's the end of season five? Yeah, yeah, because the end of season five, the finale is where she is given her title of the Princess of Friendship. So seasons four and five, I would say, are the next arc, which is basically Twilight coming into her princesshood. And then seasons six and on are basically the preparation for her to take over. And... Overall, I think it did fantastically at it. I think that all of these different arcs felt separate enough. And I think that uh, there were a lot of great things that they did with them. Um, I liked the different stories we got, the different characters we got, and how each different part like integrated those different stories and characters, um, for the most part, in a good way. 
again, there were some exceptions, but for the most part, it's like it felt like the episodes fit with that period of time. Um, for example, having the students be introduced and everything and become characters in the final couple seasons made sense for where Twilight was in her story arc. So, yeah, it worked out extremely well. Um, yeah, overall, do I feel like the series should have been longer or shorter? I feel like it could have gone on for one more season. I feel like it could have. But I think it, it finished off strong either way. Um, I did hear, and I, I don't know if this is true or confirmed or not, but I, I think I heard something about, uh, in fact, I think it was on Equestria Daily. Yeah, yeah. I, I had seen this article that had a bunch of like this interview with, I believe it was Big Jim. And in it, he said, um, it, one of the questions was basically about uh, like what they would have done or something if uh, the show hadn't been canceled. And the way Big Jim answered it kind of came across as, yeah, it was canceled. And I'm wondering if that's true, because I hadn't heard anything about this. Was MLPFIM actually canceled by the network or Hasbro or whoever? Um, and if so, why? It's like, it was like their biggest moneymaker. Because here's the thing. Before this, I thought that they had just chosen to end the show on season nine. But, yeah, by that question, I'm not going to look it up because it'll take way too long. And, again, already a long video. But, yeah, by the question and Jim's answer, it just seemed like, yeah, it was actually canceled. Um, and, and that's really kind of confusing to me. I don't know. If anyone can actually, uh, like, clarify on that, please do. Um, and, and so now the question lies in what is next for MLP content on this channel. Um, well, obviously, we're not going to have any reactions to any more series stuff, which includes Equestria Girls, um, basically just because there's nothing left coming. I'm not going to react to any of the Equestria Girls stuff I've missed, including uh, the recently leaked, uh, I guess it's a holiday special for Equestria Girls. That's supposed to be the last thing in Generation 4. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to react to that. Um, but I do plan to check out Generation 5 when that starts up. Um, I, I'm still part of the fandom, and I still plan to check out Generation 5. Hopefully it'll be as good, if not better. Um, as for like wh who my favorite characters were, my favorite episodes altogether, that kind of stuff... Those are going to be top 10 lists. I'm going to be making separate top 10 lists uh, to go over all of those kind of things. Um, so yeah, I don't know exactly when I'll get those out, but hope that they'll be out relatively soon, like sometime within the next couple weeks. Um, there probably won't be much of any like other... like. PMVs or anything for uh, MLP. I might do one more PMV. I'm still kind of deciding whether or not I want to do it because it's a it's a very specific one, let's put it that way, that I want to do. Um, and I'm just not sure if I'm going to do it. But otherwise, it's like I'm not going to make much more of those at all or any other kind of big thing like that. Um, Again, once Generation 5 comes, maybe I'll do stuff with that, but again, we'll have to see. It's just too early to say. Um, reactions are the only things you can expect from that at the moment. Um, but yeah, so all of that stuff will be coming. Um, all of the uh, top tens and whatnot. And that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about with this. Um... I would say season nine is not my favorite. Uh, the second half was just too inconsistent and just not that great. Um, but it was still mostly good. And I would still say that it ended off on a very, very high note. Um, but yeah, I, I am so happy to have been a part of this, a part of this fandom and community.
as you guys know, this this show is what got me into a lot of the other shows I've reacted to, from Star Versus to Gravity Falls to all kinds of things. Without discovering MLP, I would have never discovered a lot of these others. And I, I, I can't thank people enough for that. I've already thanked specific people in the past, but there's a couple people, obviously, that really... Uh, made the difference for me. One of whom is uh, Mr. Davey, the guy who created uh, the um, uh, the Flash animation for, uh, what is it called? Smile HD. Because um, Smile HD was the first piece of anything from MLP or the fandom that I saw. And honestly, without discovering it, I probably might have never discovered MLP in and of itself. Um, I, I want to thank Ratchet, Ratchetness, or Ratchet Noble Wolf, whatever you want to call him, um, because his reaction to Smile HD really got me interested in the series. And because of it, it's just like his reactions have held a very special place personally to me because of it. So, yeah. Um, and obviously, I could thank I could take the time to thank all of the different show staff and voice actors who just made this show so special, and all the friends I've made throughout these years since I first discovered this show in 2013. But in the end, it's like there's way too many. <laughs> Honestly, there's way too many I could I, I could take the time to thank. So in, instead of like spending another half hour thanking everyone, I'll just I, I thank everyone at once. I thank every one of you, all my friends, all of the show staff, all of the awesome fandom personalities. I thank you all for just continuing to make this fandom amazing and breathing life into just what otherwise would have been seen as just a silly show for little girls. This show, this fandom saved my life from suicide and depression. And I'll never, never forget that. So thank you, all of you. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.